In last week's Torah portion, we saw Moshe arguing with God, suggesting all sorts of reasons why he wasn't the right person to lead the Jews out of Egypt. One of his reasons was that he didn't speak fluently, whatever that meant. He stuttered, he had a speech impediment, he was tongue-tied, and God said, don't worry. I'm gonna go down there with you and I'm gonna send Aharon, your brother, as your spokesperson. And so Moshe reluctantly went. He speaks to Pharaoh. It didn't go well. Pharaoh increased the workload of the Jews and the Jews get upset and they're complaining to Moshe. And now God says, go back to Pharaoh again. And Moshe says, how's Pharaoh gonna believe me? I don't speak well, I'm tongue-tied. What's going on? He raised this objection previously and God swatted away. Why is he bringing it up again? And so based on some of the commentaries, maybe we can suggest the following answer. Something had changed. The first time around, it was a practical objection. God, you're asking me to be your spokesperson. I don't speak fluently. I don't speak well. Find somebody who's a gifted orator. And God says, don't worry. Aaron will be your spokesperson. This time around, when he raises this objection again, he had gone and he had stood in front of Pharaoh. And remember who Moshe was. He's the one Jew who's familiar with the palace. He used to be the overseer of the palace until the day that he struck and killed the Egyptian taskmaster and had to flee. So he's familiar with all of the rules, the rituals, where to stand, how to address Pharaoh, how to reply. And he knows his job on this planet is to increase God's honor not to decrease it. And he knows, as the sages explained, that everything is in the hands of heaven. God controls everything in the world, except for one thing, a person's fear of heaven. That's your decision. God restricts himself, he, he contracts himself, he doesn't get involved in that. Each of us makes our own decision to what extent we will or won't revere or fear God. And so Moshe maybe feels the obligation to share with God from his human perspective as nearsighted, as myopic as it is. God, my job is to increase your honor. And I'm there as your representative, trying to convince Pharaoh that you're God, not a God, like in his pantheon of many gods in Pharaoh's head. The God. I'm trying to convince him that you're the master of the universe, all powerful. And your representative is standing there tongue-tied like you couldn't even cure my speech defect. I felt that my presence there, not being able to speak, resulted in Pharaoh's eyes, to which I'm very sensitive, uniquely sensitive, resulted in a reduction in your honor, not an increase. I'm sharing that information with you because that's my job to watch your back, to increase your honor. And maybe I have some sensitivity because I have the human perspective that I want to share with you. Whatever you choose, having received that information, that's your choice. And God receives it and says to him, go back. Aaron's going to be your spokesperson. And that's fine. He doesn't argue, he understands. But you see from this, his desire, his perhaps perceived obligation to share with God his feeling that maybe I'm bringing your honor down a notch. It's a reminder, that's our job. We are here as the Jewish people to be God's ambassadors. We're here to be role models. We're the chosen people. That doesn't mean better. It means we have a specific role in the world. People are looking at us, our speech, our actions, and to the extent it's correct, honest, upright, uplifting, that inspires more fear of heaven. It increases God's name, his reputation, his honor in the world. But the converse, of course, is also true. When we do the wrong thing, it decreases God's honor. Like it or not, we are moral barometers. We're role models. We're spiritual guides for our fellow Jews and for the rest of the world. That's our mission. That's our mantle. That's our responsibility. Everything we say, everything we do.